This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Puma travel trailer. And the uh, model number is, I have to lower this down here so I can see it. Hold on. The model number is 28BHSS. Okay. Let me hook this back up for you. So this is not a, uh, this is not a sales or a floor plan video. This is a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? So here we are at the door side rear. First of all, you can see you've got power stabilizer jacks. Now the power stabilizers, uh, you have one switch that controls both rear and another switch up front that will control both front. Now if you look over on the other side, you can see that these can be cranked manually in emergency. So if you look at that, there's a shaft with a pin through it there. Um, if you look up in the front compartment, you, there's a crank for it. You can use that crank to get you out of trouble in an emergency. So I'll show you that right now. It's right here. So I showed you it was a, a shaft with a pin through it. Well, there's a cylinder with a slot cut in it that'll fit right over that. And you can actually crank them manually if you need to. Okay. Now just let me look under here real quick. Another thing I should have done ahead of time. Okay, so you have another one of these right here. If you see it, hopefully you can see that right there. You can also see it through this hole, sort of. Now that's attached to the slide room on the other side. So you can actually crank the slide room using that same uh, crank. Just put it through here onto that shaft there with the pin through it. You can actually crank it manually in emergency also, which is a great thing. Now, one other thing excuse my camera work another thing is is your power tongue jack if it ever fails you can pull this plug out and there's a three-quarter inch hex you can either use a drill with a three-quarter six-point socket or you can actually use this this um, crank here so um, these two cranks can get you out of trouble so you can you can crank the slide out manually you can crank the um, the power stabilizers manually and the power tongue jack manually in emergency. Okay, so coming back to the outside kitchen, this slides out, of course, right? You, this hose is your LP hose for this. This, um, the top of the griddle flips over, obviously. We're looking at the bottom of it, but I'll show you that this is where this piece of this hose connects to right here you see there's the quick connect and it goes on right there then the other end goes into either one of these quick connects down here those go to the LP system so if you get another grill for example you can go in one of them and put the griddle in another but you can hook up to two appliances right into there make sure if you buy a grill or anything else you make sure it's the right pressure for a travel trailer don't don't just buy it you know a uh, like something you'd use at home, it won't work. Not enough pressure. Um, you have running water, of course. This is a sprayer and a coiled hose that goes with it. You have a regular uh, dorm type refrigerator right here. Okay. All right. So, you have a power awning with LED strip. Now, this particular, this, this, this right here is a, is a vent. It's a vent for your range hood. One thing you have to remember is that if you're going to vent to the outside, you have to reach up or stand on something if you're not tall enough and just put your thumb underneath the, that baffle there and free it up so it flaps freely because you won't vent to the outside unless that baffle is flapping freely. So you always want to do that uh, when you're trying to vent to the outside. Okay, you have uh, outside speakers, of course. Now, this is... Uh, the most common way to get water to the trailer is, uh, is the city water hookup, which is on the other side of the trailer. But right here, you have a fresh water fill. So let's say you're going to an older state park that does not have plumbing on the campsite, but it does have a fill station right by the ranger station or the gates when you first come in. Well, you would pull over to there and then you would fill your fresh water tank and you then use the onboard pump to pump the water. Everything will work as though you have city water, but you'll be pumping it from the tank, okay? Now, while we're here, after you dump your black tank, the black tank, of course, is toilet water and waste. Uh, the valves are on the other side. I'll show you those when we get over there. But 
if you were to uh, dump your black tank and leave the valve open, you can hook the hose of the dump station right on here. There's a sticker that tells you, make sure you open the valve um, before you do it. Then you turn on the water, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank. It'll clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. So it's a really good thing to do. If there's a working hose at the dump station, I highly recommend you do that. All right, that's just a, your vent for your furnace. Here we have a TV hookup here. We have signal out and power. All right, here's your, the switch for your two front stabilizers right here. Okay, now this right here is just a, a hookup for, this one's made by Go Power. If you wanted to purchase a solar panel, a portable solar panel to charge your battery with, um, you would plug it right into here. But it's a proprietary, I don't know how standard this plug is, I see all different types, but um, this one is made by Go Power. Okay. Your two cranks I told you about, and this is the, um, that's the dump hose that comes with it. Okay. Two LP tanks which are full, your power tongue jack like I showed you. And remember, you can crank it manually if you need to. Um, you have a deep cycle marine battery, and you have a kill switch for it right here. If you want to shut it off uh, ever, you just turn it off right there. That way you don't have to disconnect cables or anything. When you put it into storage, you could just click it right off. Okay. So, this is your water heater. So, the thing to remember is um, this switch right here, this rocker switch, this controls the electric heating element that's behind that cover. All right, so you just always want to remember that this switch, switch is here, so you need to turn it on. Never turn it on without water in the water heater tank. Always make sure there's water in there, okay? That's important, or else you could burn out the element very quickly. This also works on gas, right? So the, the switch for the gas burner is inside. I'll show you that when we get inside the trailer. And also, this is the drain for it. So this is a, uh, um, takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket in order to, to unscrew this uh, drain plug here. There's also a, an anode rod attached to the back, so it's, you know, it's six or eight inches long, but it's regular pipe thread, but you would need an inch and a sixteenth wrench to pull it out, and that's where you drain the water from. All right. So this is just an outside shower. Um, this is the city water hookup. Remember I told you this is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You just hook it up and turn it on and you're all set. If you don't have city water, you can pre-fill that fresh water tank like I showed you. And then you can uh, turn on the pump and pump it. Okay? Alrighty. So these are, these are your valves here for draining it. You've got two grays. And then the one in the back is the black. The larger valve is always the black one. And then the, the smaller ones are the gray ones. Gray is sink and shower water. Uh, black is toilet water and waste, of course. If you're going to use the, the black tank flush, you would leave the black tank valve open and before you turn on the water, like I told you earlier. OK, so we'll move a little farther down. Some storage there. You, this is a 50 amp system, so you got a 50 amp power cord. And we also give you the reducers to reduce it down to a 30 and then down to a 20. So you can plug it in just about anywhere. This housing is telling us that this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you want to get one, it's, uh, it takes a Furion camera. We sell them here. You can get them elsewhere. Just make sure you get the Furion camera that fits in that housing. Of course, it comes with a ladder. The manufacturer states you should inspect your roof every 90 days. So it's Keep that in mind, you always want somebody to go up there. Uh, check out the, all the seal up, make sure there's no cracking or separation. Um, you want to be able to look at it and make sure that there's no damage to the roofing material or to any of the roofing attachments, you know, by low branches or road debris flipping up there, anything like that. So every 90 days is what's recommended. Okay, so let's go inside. Okay, so. Uh, your power awning is right here, you can see it. Never leave it out unattended. Always roll it in if, uh, if you're not going to be at the campsite. Your slide room button is here. Uh, to turn your water pump on is right here. To light the water heater on gas is right here, right? Remember I told you the electric switch is in the lower left-hand corner outside. These are lights. 
and then of course you have your you know your battery which is charged fresh water which is a third right now a black tank uh, which is low and then you only have two gray tanks on this I would believe so you don't pay attention to the third one but you have the two different gray tanks. They graduate up in, in one third increments till they're full so okay right now it, they disregard this because it, the trailer has been dewinterized now okay all right so let's see here here we are in the kitchen so your microwave works like any other microwave your range hood vent Remember I showed you the, the vent on the outside, and this is the range hood fan here. So you have to open up the, if you're going to vent to the outside, open up that baffle, and you turn on the fan, and it'll vent to the outside. you got light here. Okay, and I don't know if he's got the gas turned on now, so if not, I'll just talk you through it. But let's give it a shot here. This is the sparker all the way to the left. You turn it clockwise to spark it, right? Then you got three knobs and three burners, and then the oven knob here. So let me see if there's anything... Yeah, so he's got the gas turned on, it's that simple. You just turn the knob on and, and turn it clockwise to spark it. Now when it comes to the oven, it's a little bit different. You can see all the way to the back at the bottom is a pilot light, right? So I can spark it here so you can see it. You can probably see it or the reflection of it anyway. Um, so what you do is you go to, go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the, the flame which means pilot light. Then you depress it and you keep it depressed through the whole lighting procedure. You're going to spark it until you see it light down here. And after it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. And then you select whatever temperature you want. And it cycles as an oven does. But um, when you shut it off, the flame goes out, obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you want to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Uh, the refrigerator is a 12-volt DC compressor refrigerator. So it runs on 12 volts. Always keep this shut when you're traveling like that, or latched while you're traveling. Okay. Uh, let me look back over here, see if I forgot anything coming while coming in. Um, no. So th this device here is your, is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If the LED is not green, get it serviced. Um, if it goes off, it'll, it's telling you that it's detected carbon monoxide or gas, or LP gas. So you take everybody outside, open the door. Take them outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off, figure out what's going on. Also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So we'll put it through the paces so you can hear what it sounds like. LP is good, carbon monoxide coming up. And then the low battery alert. So it's telling you uh, it's the same pitch as the other, of the other beeps, it's just slower. Okay. All right, so let's move down a bit here. This is what we've forgotten here. This is a pantry here. Um, let me look in here. I'm looking for something else here that I haven't touched on yet, but I haven't seen it either, so let me look. Okay, these are the bunk rooms. Okay, we're going to come back to the bunk room in a second, but I'll just show you this while we're here. This is your power converter right here. You can see it right there. What this does is converts AC to DC power. Okay. Um, you can see that uh, you've got regular 120 AC circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're all labeled, right? Then the, the power is converted to 12 volt DC, and you can see you got 12 volt circuit breakers up here, right? So that's, it converts AC to DC power. Also, it senses how much energy your battery has or, and needs up front. And it'll, as long as you're plugged in, it's always going to keep it charged. So it, this, this is your, your service panel here for AC. Then it converts AC to DC here. And it also tends your battery, senses how much it needs, and if it's if the battery's ch topped off, it'll you know it'll uh, uh, just trickle a couple amps up there to maintain it. If it's low, it can send 10 amps or whatever it needs to send to keep your battery charged. Of course, when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator will be charging the battery. So this is what charges it when it's plugged in. Okay, that's the power converter. So we'll come back in the bunk room in a minute. All right, so. 
This table can drop down and sit on these cleats here. There's cleats all the way around and then you use the cushions to fill in the space. It turns into a bed. This is a theater seating right here. Okay. And let's, let me see here. This jackknife's flat also and turns into another bed. Okay. TV works like any other TV. Here's the remote for it. Right there. This is the remote for your, your stereo here. So basically, this uh, has AM FM radio. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone to your tablet, for example. Um, it has a USB, so you could put all your favorite albums on one USB drive and take them with you, for example. It has an HDMI in, so this goes into the system here. The reason you might want to do that is if you got like a portable Blu-ray player or something, you could go, you could set it here, plug it in, and go straight into the system this way. Okay, you just have to select the right source to change it over, of course. And um, it also has uh, two speaker zones, zone one and zone two. One is inside the trailer, zone two is outside the trailer. So there's a lot you can do with it. It has all the typical functions of a radio also when it comes to presets and the rest of it. So, okay. And that, then, last but not least, down here on the bottom, uh, here's the remote for your fireplace. I'll just do it with the buttons here. So this works on a 110 AC. There you have it right there. And now you can change the, co pick, the color of the fire right here. Right? You can change the color of the crystals right here. Right? You can set the fan speed to see it says low, high, Okay, you do that, and uh, like I said, it just changes the fan speed, and it's a very good space heater. Okay, then of course, uh, let me see what else is. I guess that's it on that one, isn't it? Let me see. Uh, I just want to make sure I've got everything in it. The, yeah, and there's a thermostat in it also. Okay, so um, there's a lot you can do with it. You can, like I said, it's a very, really good space heater. The neat thing about it is. You know, you've got a limited supply of AC, or um, excuse me, of LP gas, so on those days where you don't quite need the furnace, you can just turn this on, turn it on high, whatever, and it'll, it'll take the chill right out of this trailer, so, okay, and then of course off. All right, hopefully I made sense with that. So the bathroom, the shower works like any other shower, the sink works like any other sink. This is a GFCI, so keep in mind that all the all the plugs in the trailer are wired to a GFCI, even the one on the outside. So if it pops outside, you're using it for something that pops. You're going to reset it inside. Um, the toilet is an RV toilet, so you have to use water and chemical in it. So let me get over here. This is the flush pedal right here. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You'll come in here. You'll put one dose of chemical right in the bowl. Then you'll step on it and stand on it long enough for about a gallon of water or so to go into the black tank below along with the chemical. That's the black tank directly down there. So you're going to have at least a gallon of water in there, some people use more, and a dose of chemical before you ever start using it. If you don't, that's considered using it dry and it will stink terribly and it can also get clogged up. So you always want to have water and chemical in there before you start using it. That's important. But it's one of those things you only you only make the mistake once, so you'll remember next time. Fan, I always use a fan to pull the humidity out. Okay. Um, storage underneath here, it's sort of like a foot locker underneath the bed. I'm going to drop it down here. Um, you have a backer plate here, and then you got TV hookups up here. This is pre-wired for a second air conditioner. So if you, that's what they're, this sticker's telling you. If you want to add a second air conditioner, it will fit right in there. And uh, it's already pre-wired. So if you find a need to do that, that's, you can do that for you. Um, your emergency window is pretty, pretty straightforward. It works like all of them. You push this all the way through, and you go all the way through with it. Then you grab a hold of this red tab and pull the screen out, and you could exit in an emergency. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go back to the bunk room. I think we've got everything up here. So the bunk room, 
Um, it's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, obviously. This jackknife's flat also, this, this couch here. Um, so actually you can have four beds in here. Okay. Um, and like I said, it can jackknife flat. You've got TV hook, a backer plate here for a bracket and TV hookups here. So you can, it'd be best to get, on this particular one, either get the scissor bracket, which is always the best way to go because you can do anything with it, or the one that swings out this way. Um, so people can see it from up on the on the bunk. So um, keep that in mind anyway if you're going to add another uh, another TV. This uh, is the exact same window I showed you up front. We're escaping, okay? Okay. There's a thermostat here somewhere that I haven't showed you because I I walked right past it apparently. Let me look back here. Yes. Okay. So the thermostat. Um, you're going to go through mode. You just keep punching mode. Right now it's on, it's on fan, or I'm, excuse me, it's on air conditioning, and with the fan, you want auto fan. Always use the, and on auto when you're using the air conditioner. That's the best way to run it. If I push it again, it would go to furnace, which is the propane heater, of course. Push it again, it would go to just fan. Fan, just fan is the, the air conditioner running without the compressor going. It just circulates air, and then you go to, to to cool, which is air conditioning, temperature up, temperature down, your modes and your the different fan selections. When they give you an option, always run the fan on auto. Okay? Alright, so okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I told you about inspecting your roof every 90 days to keep after it. Generally speaking, people don't inspect the roof enough. That rule, a uh, 90 day rule doesn't apply just to this trailer. It's every trailer every trailer ever made. Um, it's just part of owning it. Um, it's a good thing because you're protecting your investment. You're always you're always aware of what's happening up there. So okay. And the other thing is that this is right now this is dewinterized. All the antifreeze has been purged from the system. It's been replaced with fresh water, and your water heater is in camping mode right now. So the trailer's ready to go. Um, remember what I said about not running the, the electric heating element or the gas valve without water in the water heater tank. You always want to make sure there's water in there, okay? Okay, thank you very much.